On 7th December 1760, the Marathas stepped out of their camp and set up a battle pillar at Chajpur. The Marathas in a way had challenged the Afghan army to come face the battle. Najib Khan Rohila marched out to face this offensive. He positioned himself against the Hujrat cavalry, while Shuja Ud-Daula stood against the Shinde and the Holkar troops. Shuja's men opened an attack on the Holkar's troops. When the Holkar's troops began to retreat under a sudden onslaught, a furious Malara Holkar exclaimed, "Run cowards and save your lives. I'll fight and die here. Let the enemy take my head." Holkar's troops attacked, quickly returned and launched a bitter attack on Shuja's army. Shuja's army quickly withdrew and overwhelmed by this sudden counterattack, they moved towards Najib Khan Rohila's army to stage a united effort against the Hujrat. Hujrat, the Royal Cavalry was supported by the Gardhi infantry. Balwant Ram Mahendre was leading the vanguard. Noticing that Najib Khan Rohila had advanced much forward leaving his main army behind, Balwant Ram Mahendre attacked Najib Khan's party. Najib Khan's brother Sultan Khan and his uncle Khalilur Rahman were with him. More than 3000 Rohila men and Khalilur Rahman was killed in action. While Najib Khan Rohila injured his shoulder, he was pulled away from the action by his troops. His brother Sultan Khan now led the charge. Balwant Ram Mahendre then leading the vanguard with selected 25 riders charged on to the Rohila captain Sultan Khan with his cavalry. At this last charge which was about 9 o'clock in the night, the victory seemed certain for the Marathas. But Balwant Rao fighting at the front was killed by a musket ball. Noticing him taking a fall off his horse, some Rohila men rushed forward to take his head. Khande Rao Naik Nimbalkar who was fighting with Balwant Rao Mahendre led a bold charge and covered his body protecting it from any mutilation. Both the armies retired to their camps that night. Balwant Rao Mahendre's death came as a shock to the entire camp. His wife Lakshmi Bai also called Tai Mahendre chose to commit sati, the practice of self-immolation by entering husband's funeral pyre. She handed over her 12-year-old son Appa Mahendre to Sadashiv Rao. Sadashiv Rao tried to persuade her against it, but she remained firm with her decision. Tai Mahendre attended sati at the Maratha camp in Panipat. As the whole Maratha camp watched this sight in pain. After this skirmish there was a concern in Afghan army as well. Ahmed Shah Abdali wanted to avoid all possible action awaiting the Marathas to be vulnerable. Najib Khan Rohila on the other hand had been impatient itching to fight. Abdali summoned all his generals and ordered This is a matter of war with which you are not acquainted. In other affairs do as you please but leave this to me. Military operations must not be hurried. You shall see how I will manage this affair and at a proper opportunity will bring it to a successful conclusion. Abdali was right. The art of war says that no matter how strong the enemy is, if the food and water supply is cut off, he can be defeated. So Ahmed Shah Abdali now deployed patrolling troops on the routes leading to the Maratha camp and managed to block all entries and exits from the Maratha camp. Any news from the outside world, letters or supplies could no longer reach the Maratha camp. On the contrary, the Afghan forces were receiving supplies from across the Yamuna River, from the Doab and the Rohil Khand. Sadashiv Rao had been instructing Govind Pand Bundele to raid the supply lines in the Doab and send those supplies for the Maratha army instead. Govind Pand Bundele continued collecting supplies for the Maratha army with great difficulty from Sikandarabad, Ghaziabad, Jalalabad in the Doab area. Now, he planned to deliver the collected supplies to Panipat. While he was in the vicinity of Meerut, a man named Jeta Singh approached him to help ferry the supplies across the river. Jeta Singh had earlier helped Dattaji Shinde at the battle of Shukratal. But this time, he betrayed the Marathas. He informed the Afghans about Govind Pant's location and his plans. The duo of Atai Khan and Haji Karimdad Khan had recently joined Ahmed Shah Abdali with fresh reinforcements. Abdali assigned them the task to eliminate Govind Pant Bundela. They quickly travelled with a small troop and reached Shahdara on the evening of 19th December 1760. A small detachment was posted there by Naro Shankar, guarding the river crossing. They were all killed in skirmish. 
While the duo reached Ghaziabad the next morning, they found another batch of Maratha men collecting supplies. These were also put to sword. Unaware of these recent developments, Govind Pant Bundela was in his tent. He saw riders approaching bearing familiar Maratha flags. He thought they were his own men and stepped out of his tent to welcome them. But they were Atai Khan's men. He tried to quickly escape on a turkey horse but was eventually caught and beheaded. His severed head was sent to Sadashiv Rao on 21st of December 1760 accompanied by a cruel message. Until today, Govind Pant looked after your needs in this world. Now, he has been sent to heaven to prepare for your arrival. Sadashiv Rao performed last rites on the head. This was second blow to the Maratha will to fight after the death of Balwant Rao Mahindra. During one of the following nights, the camp followers had gone out of the camp to gather firewood and fodder for the animals in the neighboring jungle. They were raided by a body of 5000 riders under the command of Shah Pasan Khan and all of them were slaughtered. These incidents affected the morale at the Maratha camp. With all the incoming routes blocked, Sadashiv Rao had his hopes pinned on the only man left, Naroshankar, the Maratha envoy in Delhi. Before his death, Govind Pant Bundela had managed to collect and dispatch 4 lakh 20 thousand rupees via courier to Naroshankar at Delhi. Krishna Rao Ballal was entrusted the duty to bring this money into Panipat. Perhaps suspecting a low possibility of success, Naroshankar did not send all the amount at once. Only 1 lakh 10 thousand rupees were sent with Krishna Rao. On 21st of December, he managed to successfully deliver the money to Sadashiv Rao. Naroshankar then arranged the remaining 3 lakh 20 thousand rupees to be delivered through one of Holkar's men named Parashar Dadaji Vag. On 30th of December, Abdali had suddenly moved his camp back to his original position on the Delhi Lahore road. This move placed him on the route between Delhi and Panipat. Unaware of this development on the cold evening of 6th January 1761, Parashar Dadaji and his 300 men traveled with a bag of 500 coins each towards Panipat. Six of these men returned back to Delhi for some reason unknown today. Traveling under the cover of darkness, the 295 men reached the vicinity of Panipat by dawn. When Parashar Dadaji approached some men seated around a fire, he was informed that it was Ibrahim Khan Gardi's camp. In reality, it was the Afghan camp. Suddenly a chaos erupted. The Afghan men who had introduced themselves as Gardis informed the neighboring camps that some Maratha men have been captured. The Maratha men did not surrender, they managed to put up a resistance and fought their way out of the Afghan camp. One man escaped south returning back to Delhi while others managed to reach the Maratha camp at Panipat and deposited 1,46,500 rupees to Sadashiv Rao. This incident had made it clear that it would be impossible for any further assistance to arrive from Delhi. Abdali further tightened the perimeter around the Maratha camp by ordering Shah Pasan Khan to increase night patrols. Anyone who was seen entering or leaving the Maratha camp was hunted down. This led to a starvation in the Maratha camp. When the cold and the hunger became intolerable, they raided the village of Panipat. They removed the roofs of some of the houses and the wooden doors for firewood. Even local farms and orchards were raided. This annoyed the locals who went against the Marathas. The stench of the animals dying in large numbers due to the starvation began to spread throughout the camp, spreading diseases. On a constant vigil, Abdali had displayed his military prowess from time to time in this campaign. He watched as the strength of the Maratha army decreased every day due to starvation. He knew that along with the strength of the body, their mental courage would be soon lost, making them easy targets. The Maratha generals pleaded Sadashiv Rao to plan an attack instead of starving to death. Sadashiv Rao now had only two options left. To surrender and save lives by accepting any proposed conditions or to attack the enemy with a lethal strategy of do or die. Since he knew that in the current situation Abdali would not offer an honorable truce, he practically had to choose the second option. On the day of winter solstice, Saturday 10th of January 1761, when the Hindus observed the festival of Makar Sankranti, Sadashiv Rao called for a war council. Mallar Rao Holkar, the senior most statesman, advised him to fight with the legacy guerrilla approach. 
to raid and open a way to escape but given the open geography heavy artillery at hand and the accompanying non combatants this was impractical the shinde holkar troops were also recently defeated in the doab when they attempted the gorilla way ibrahim khan gardi and his disciplined regiment were trained by the french in the battle formations accordingly it was decided that the army should form a gold defense formation in which the non combatants and their families would remain at the core protected by the army from all sides the army would then attempt to break through the enemy flank using heavy artillery and advance towards delhi as a group the responsibility for the success of this plan was at the helm of artillery commander ibrahim khan gardi abdali had earlier attempted to lure ibrahim khan gardi to his side but ibrahim khan remained loyal and did not betray the marathas on the night of 13th january the maratha army began their preparations to leave for delhi under the leadership of sadashiv rao the marathas were now going to fight the biggest battle a maratha army had ever fought what was this battle for many have tried to answer this question some called it a religious war a war of faith and beliefs some termed it the maratha resistance for the protection of their motherland technically the marathas had traveled north to keep their promise as per the treaty they made in 1752 they had sworn to protect the country and the mughal dominion from any foreign invaders in return for their rights in the north the historic battlefield of panipat was to witness a battle hardened promise against the invaders of hindustan